Let's pray together. Our Father God, who's our um, who's our refuge, we thank you. We truly give you praise and grace uh, for saving us without a price um, with the, uh, your blood that was shed on the hills of the Golgotha. We also thank you for taking care of us, um, that we, we are not children with our parents, and you have um, brought us into your protection. We thank you for this. And help us and open up our spiritual eyes so that we may look forward to uh, your second coming and uh, the fact of this amazing salvation that you've given us in our life. And until the day you come, help us to abide in your word and your fellowship. Help us to be united as one so that we may work uh, for your glory and gospel and the church. And please give us the wisdom so that we may realize the lack of time that we have um, to spread your gospel and even to sacrifice for you. And please guide our footstep in our faith, uh, no matter what the situation may be, or the trials and tribulations and sufferings that we may be uh, facing. And truly, we truly seek um, that you will fill everything that we need so that our church, the Church of Guam, uh, may be able to fulfill the mission that you've given us, especially in the Pacific. And also, please give us the appropriate uh, grace, uh, not for not only for us as individuals, but also as a family and also as a business, that we may um, signify your glory. Yeah. 
We ask that at this hour that you open up our spiritual eyes so that we may be able to discern um, the, the lesson that you have for us today. And please give us the, the strength um, and the wisdom so that we may be able to discern your will, that we may be able to uh, obey uh, your will. And we pray in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Let's read it together. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read uh, verse 15 together. Nice to see you all again. For a long time, we have been covering the to uh, topic titled The Peace of God That Surpasses All Perception. And today is part seven of this series. With the Great Bible Seminar just a day away, uh, we will focus on the Word of God title, We Are One in the Lord, and share the grace and lessons um, that's given by the Lord today. So through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, I hope that this hour will be an opportunity for all of our hearts to be united as one so that we can labor and cooperate in the work of the Lord. Uh, I've emphasized over and over that there's peace and joy given by the Lord in a normal Christian faith life. And having um, this joy and peace is only natural for Christians to possess in the Lord. Uh, nevertheless, only a few children of God truly enjoy this joy and peace in their everyday life, which is very unfortunate. Uh, 
사람의 영적인 건강 상태를 측정해 볼수 있는 바로 비전입니다. And especially this joy and peace for Christians, it, it acts as a barometer uh, which can indicate the spiritual health of their faith life. 건강의 상실은 전능하신 그분의 보호의 분야 안에서 벗어났다라는 분명한 And the loss of this peace is a definite signal which indicates that we have strayed from the protection of the Almighty Lord. And it is a, also it's a sign that we are straying from the road that the Lord has um, guided for us. And the reason is is that this peace um, and joy, it's it cannot it should not be determined um, by the circumstances. And we have to remember that this uh, joy and peace that Apostle Paul had stressed it was during his time in the Roman prison. And though he was, uh, his life was at stake uh, while in prison, uh, this joy and peace that he had in the Lord, uh, no one could take away. And this is uh, this is a truth that's not only for Apostle Paul, but this is a truth that um, or applies to all Christians who have received um, his grace and salvation, and it overcomes um, the ger- generations um, or time. And I've mentioned again before that it's very, uh, it's a very important question uh, to ask on how can we maintain this peace. And the first one is that there is peace when we truly have that faith that the Lord is with us. And second, there's peace when we truly rely completely on God, which is faith. And third, there's peace as we become more and more familiar with God and Jesus Christ intellectually as well as personally. Because he is um, our faith, his, which our faith is based on. And if we know exactly who he is, we cannot help but rely on him. And then there's peace when we love and obey God's words. And that would be a false peace um, if 
you do not love the uh, the word, his word, and obey it. And in addition, there's peace to those who pray. And we can overcome our weaknesses when we pray and entrust the Lord for everything. Uh, at this hour, we will cover more in detail uh, about peace uh, when th- there's unity in the body of Christ, the church. So, in other words, um, when there is no unity uh, in the church and the body of Christ, then that peace will be broken. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read it again together. And the true peace for Christian is when um, the heart of the Christian is guided by his word. And the peace uh, that the Lord gives us is when we are abiding in Christ. And it is true peace in our hearts, and, and it's the grace upon grace that's given by the Lord that the people of this world may not understand. As it is said in Philippians chapter 4, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication which thanksgiving, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And this is um, a true peace of the heart that uh, no one of this world through their intellect, uh, intellectually or through their emotions, uh, they cannot understand or fathom this peace that we have in the Lord. The, our faith life, when we say we receive salvation, that is the beginning of our faith life. And uh, the end result of our salvation, the final, is it, it shows up, displays itself as the uh, eternal peace. And um, by definition, heaven is uh, having peace eternally. Again, it says, um, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. 
So why did God call us and uh, to save us? And why did he give us the grace upon grace for us to be able to abide in this body of Christ, the church? And uh, being one in the Lord is, uh, in other words, same thing as um, being uh, within the body of Christ, the church. And we were called to be part of that one body. And to be called to be part of this one body, uh, when we uh, attain this, that's when we can truly find that peace and joy. When you look at the last part of uh, verse 15, it says to be thankful. And what should we be thankful for? And it's telling us to be thankful to God that we were called uh, to be of one body, that we may have uh, peace in our hearts. So how can we be thankful? And what is the evidence of being thankful? And that, it, and that means to, um, to, to be able to keep this one body in cooperation. And, and that is only um, a right that we need, that's how we should display our um, gratitude toward the Lord. And uh, it would, it doesn't make sense if we were to stress our thankfulness to the Lord and for His grace uh, if we cannot. Um, uh, we cannot build this uh, unity. And with all the different um, the saints in the church or people in the church, um, the the most important thing is to be able to be to unite together. And it's not a matter of who's right or wrong. It's not like we cannot say that it's like Mixing water with water or mixing alcohol with alcohol, it's like you need to be able to discern or distinguish it. And it's not like just um, being able to accept that, okay, what's good is good or just what is adequate, we just you know overlook it, let's just overlook it for that sake. We definitely need to be able to discern. And we need to discern uh, what is ethically right and morally right and spiritually right. Um, of course, we need to stop um, 
being used by Satan uh, by making judgments and complaints and um, disagreements. And for to maintain that unity of the church, uh, we need to uh, we need to strive um, through prayer, through laboring, and through um, sacrifices to maintain that uh, uh, unity. And which we need to be aware of this always. Uh, we have to always be mindful of our words um, that come out of our mouth and, and our actions and to see if whatever we say or act, if it will be beneficial to the church or the unity of the church or if it will be detrimental. Again, we need to think about um, the acronym WWJD, what would Jesus do in whatever that situation may be. And so we need to be able to control our hearts um, and not to react emotionally and think about what would Jesus do at that particular moment. And you have to consider, will it bring glory to the Lord or will it um, bring shame to him? And also consider where, uh, whether Jesus will be uh, happy about that or to be saddened by it. The church has to become one. And we have to maintain, maintain that unity. And we have to, uh, in order to maintain that unity, we need to pray to labor and sacrifice. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 16 through 18. Let's read together. When you look at verse 16, here it says, um, um, them both, you can sell them both. Uh, if you look in the verses previous to that, it talks about us or we. Uh, first, this we, it, it means um, Apostle Paul and the saints of uh, the Church of Ephesus. Uh, at the same time, it also uh, referring, it's also referring to the Jews and the Gentiles. And he says here, these two were, um, uh, were enemies. And it means that these two could never become one. Uh, the Israelites were the chosen people of God. The 
though they may not outrightly say it, uh, the Jews consider the Gentile, Gentiles to be like dogs or animals. And those um, religious, uh, traditionally religious Jews, uh, they won't even eat together with the Gentile at the same table. And here it says, though, that these um, the enemies could become one. And the answer here lies in that one body uh, through the cross. The cross is the answer. Uh, in looking at verse 17, it says here, uh, those who are afar off and those who are near. And so it means here those far afar are the ones uh, they're saying those far from gospel, which is the Gentiles, and those who are near it is referring to uh, the Jews. And the gospel means uh, the good news, but also it's news of peace. So through um, the peace, um, they can these two can uh, go to the Father together. Sorry, that was through the Spirit. Uh, they can go together to the Father. And uh, think about this. How can these two enemies um, become one? Um, I've uh, emphasized many times in the past 11 years that I've been here that we are, we are not uh, skilled at expressing our love for one another and uh, many misunderstandings cause uh, strife. And of course, um, naturally, some may have done better than others. But uh, however, that's not what's important here. Uh, but what's more important is um, um, our, our life, through our life and our, through our faith life um, that we have, that was received um, uh, through the salvation of the Lord, what is what is important? And you know that um, when you when you have the desire for something that is um, uh, minor, you may uh, end up losing what is more important. Uh, let's just uh, <clears throat> use the example of when you raise children, young children, um, you, you know, you clothe them, you feed them, and you take care of them, but when you <clears throat> ask for a candy, for example, um, mo many of the times they, they don't want to share. It's not the father uh, is asking for it because he needs it, but it's the heart of the child that's important. And if that child were to share with uh, others uh, or to the father, uh, on seeing that, watching that, how much joy that would bring to the parent's heart. 
and the parents' desire would to be, you know, be able to give the child more uh, things. And that is the parent of, the, the, of this physical parent or biological parent. And um, incomparable God who had given his one and only son uh, to the cross for us, his love. Um, don't you think that he would want to, his desire would be to give us even better things? Um, mostly, uh, uh, it would not be that one person who's totally in the wrong. Um, there's usually uh, both are at fault, whether that would be a smaller percent for one side. So if that is the case, then it's not important to uh, try to figure out who's right or wrong. And that is not wise. And do you know by uh, trying to discern who's right or wrong, it can bring forth even more misunderstandings and more strife? First, you need to pray to God. And, of course, first we need to reflect on ourselves in front of God. But uh, though it may bring uh, physical um, hurt to yourself, uh, you may be hurt, but first say things that would bring glory to God, what would please Him first. And you all know that Proverbs 16, 16 verse 7, which says that when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And this is what's important. And it's not important whether uh, someone w w is in the wrong or not. And our, the faith life is reflecting upon ourselves in front of God. That's and whether the other person was in the wrong, that's secondary. It's not, it's a minor, it's not, it's a minor problem. So we have to consider um, not what is of reality or of the flesh, but we need to look through the eyes of faith. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Let's read together. So, if you are, if you were saved and you've received salvation, then you need to live accordingly. And just because you call yourself a Christian and you uh, go back and fro to church doesn't make you a real Christian. And 
and you have to live uh, a truly a Christian-like life where you will bear fruit. And so you need to um, reflect on yourself and uh, compare yourself uh, to the Word of God and to see if you are truly living, ref- um, being reflected of uh, being a Christian, a true Christian. And are you displaying humility uh, through your, the words that you speak and through your actions? And are, is it, are you displaying um, warmth? Are you... And uh, your patience, is it being displayed? And uh, are you bearing with one another in love? So what is the big problem? Even though they may have committed a serious um, sin or um, offense to you, you need to uh, forgive them and pray for them. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And what is this um, bond of peace that is love? And without love, um, peace cannot be maintained. And he's saying <clears throat> that it, it is not you're trying he's not telling us to create that unity, but he's saying that you are have you've already been united, so uh, maintain that unity. And there are those who want to break this unity. Who? It's Satan. Of course, Satan can never take away our salvation. No matter how great of a Christian that a person may have been, but Satan can take that away in one you know, split second or instantly. Because he will, uh, he will get in the way of being united with the body of Christ, the church. And he will cause division in the hearts. And without uh, us being aware, we end up um, judging others and uh, we end up committing sin. And we will display instead of uh, gentleness and uh, humility, uh, we become, uh, we may display aggressiveness. And instead of love, uh, uh, actually hatred. And of course, um, uh, by this, there may be a cause for this. But um, what's for certain is that that is not coming from the Lord. And it's coming without even maybe us being aware uh, we are being used by Satan. And 
And th that would be the time that we need to uh, hold on to the Lord, uh, the word of the God more, and we need to labor even more for Him. And it says here, endeavor uh, to keep the unity of the Spirit. So uh, if we cannot have that unity, how can we have fellowship? And without unity, how can we have the church? So there is um, Satan who will do anything he can to break this unity. And then there's the Holy Spirit who will help us uh, to maintain it. And so we need to be able to discern this fact. So that's why we need to have spiritual discernment. So we need to know what is the will of God, what is the true uh, will. And he says to test what is the true will of God. So we cannot for a second forget that maintaining this unity is very important. And if that unity breaks, then that heaven will become hell. If that unity is broken uh, in the family, uh, the classroom, or even the church, uh, will there be peace? Will there be joy? Let me repeat myself. So do not look for that peace in the environment and others. You need to find it within yourself. So even if it's just me, uh, keep maintain um, that position and according to his word. And no, maybe the uh, situation may be frustrating, uh, just wait for uh, the Lord's answer. Uh, do not be impatient. Because the Lord will um, be, he's in control, he will control it. So that's it for that. So why is our faith life so sensitive to uh, the environment or others? when our faith life should be based on um, as we look to God and we follow his word. It's not following the pastor or other brethren. And our faith life is based only upon our, um, based upon only our, um, our hearts to God, to the Lord. And wouldn't it be so nice to have that faith, a steadfast, uh, steadfast faith where we are not shaken by others, that it is a, 
uh, our faith is so strong, it has a stronghold that we can even um, look to others and care for others. And to have that uh, safety uh, or uh, sta stability in the church is what's important. Uh, my youngest son, uh, Enchan, Caleb, was in Korea for about three months. And he um, visited his grandparents and aunts and other relatives' houses. I'm sure he also visited other brothers and sisters' homes. I'm sure they treated him really well. Uh, even though um, he was sort of nervous or anxious. No matter how um, welcoming they may have been, all those toys and things, uh, they're, they're not his, it's, it's theirs. And the older kids may even be nice to him, but it's not like his own brothers. And that's why children, um, they have this anxiety when they don't see their mother. So um, so when he wakes up in the morning at home now, um, he doesn't even look for his mother. In Korea, the first thing he did when he opened his eyes was to see if his mother was there. So, I mean, he doesn't need his mother. I mean, he wakes up and goes to the bathroom and plays with his brother. He doesn't even look for her. And so I shared this fellowship with his mother that um, since he's been home, he feels this stability, this comfort that uh, he has, the dad's there, the father's there, and his brothers are there. And that is uh, the same thing for our faith life. Even in the church, you have the pastor and uh, the leaders, officers, uh, laborers, and other brethren in the church. And whether you have a title of a position or not, everyone is a laborer of Christ. And everyone is uh, a God's family. And because we are a spiritual family, if within the family, if people continue to stumble and fall and um, to show this um, instability, um, that brings anxiety. And if you're not uh, a spiritually a newborn and you've uh, been leading uh, faith life for some time, wouldn't it be nice for you to display uh, uh, your faith as being stable and to bring stability in, into the church uh, if you're living according to the Word of God and if you're displaying that kind of a stronghold faith. And no matter, you know, if you're being misunderstood or, no, or, or you're uh, uh, a subject to criticism by others, uh, you know that the Lord knows. Is there anyone perfect? Do you know, do 
Do you know how much Paul was judged by the saints of uh, Corinth? Uh, uh, they accused him of not even being an apostle, or they accused him of he, that he's um, um, doing this to make a living. And if he was mindful of uh, each and every uh, one of these accusations, he would not have been able to do the work of God. And for him to be judged by others uh, was uh, minor. It was uh, not a big deal to him. So only look upon Jesus. And don't be shaken. You need to stand firm. And even for me as a pastor, and I'm sure it's the same for all of you, uh, there are times when it's, uh, you know, it's hard, difficult. And there are times when you um, are tired or, you know, I'm sure you have things that you want to say. And there are things that you have to say that you don't want to say. And if you um, were able to uh, express everything that you want to say, would you mature in your faith and in character? And with authority, um, that uh, it brings that much of responsibility. And so instead of uh, trying to display your authority as a Christian, um, you also need to uh, reflect and see if you are um, doing what you are supposed to be doing as a Christian. So for a Christian, you need to first put God uh, uh, as priority. Second, you need to put others. And third, your, yourself, lastly. And there are times, even for myself, there are times uh, when situations are difficult, when I am tired and um, low in energy, but um, I, as much as I can, in front of uh, uh, saints, um, the brethren, I try to uh, upkeep my energy. And of course, it doesn't mean that you need to live uh, hip with, uh, hypocritically, but uh, you need to use self-control or exercise control. So what is the difference between man and animals? Is that animals, they react uh, with their instincts. But people, uh, men, can uh, use um, control. It's not the truth to um, react to it's, it's, uh, that every situation because you're angry or you want to say something. If, we're, if the parents were um, um, go home and express their um, display their um, tiredness or exhaustion or, or problems to the children, uh, if they express everything they were feeling, uh, what kind of stability would the children uh, get in the house, in the home? And that would break totally their comfort, their uh, stability. And they, are, they, would, they would be prone to anxiety and nervousness. And 
And so the best way to raise your children in the home is not just to buy them uh, material things that they need, but to display love between the mother and father as parents. And um, what can we, uh, Christians who've been um, born again for a while, what can we uh, show or display to those newly born Christians? And that is the love, the unity uh, with each other, and to be uh, and to be uh, steadfast or strong, uh, standing firm in our faith. And so we have a responsibility, like uh, parents to the children in the home. It is the likewise for us Christians who have uh, been leading a faith life. Faith life. That is also our responsibility uh, to display or to show to the newly born Christians. And just because the church is growing doesn't mean that your faith life individually is also growing. So we need to, uh, it's necessary for us to reflect upon our, uh, ourself uh, to see where we stand in our faith. In the last district meeting or district fellowship we had, one of the brothers uh, uh, shared a testimony um, referring to the pillars mm -hmm. Uh, of our church, uh, the brethren that stands as pillars. So we need to um, to become uh, those Christians that is like the pillars of a church uh, that is important part of the church. I'm sure you're all aware that in the uh, early churches how the gospel was able to explode. And of course, it's because they were truly uh, um, love the Word of God and they truly loved each other. Uh, they um, love to g uh, gather uh, together in fellowships and um, were willing to sacrifice and labor for the gospel. And also it's because there were Christians who were like the pillars of the church. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's read together. And the early churches, um, James, Cephas, and John were considered to be the pillars of the early church. And this James here is the brother of Jesus. Yes, brother of Jesus, uh, younger brother of Jesus. And Cephas is Peter and John. So 
so they uh, were pillars of the church, uh, these uh, Christians who were saved first. Do you think that if these uh, um, early Christians um, were not um, united as one, do you think the gospel would have exploded like that? Because the church is the body of Christ, maintaining unity is more important than anything else. So if there is no unity of the heart and mind among the saints, but discord and dissension and conflicts with the op opponent, then the church will lose its position and mission as a church. I suggest that when you go home that you meditate carefully on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Can the head and the body be uh, divided? Of course, the body of Christ, there should not be division or divided. And the body needs to obey the, uh, the will of the head. And no matter uh, how beautiful that part of the body may be, if it separates from the body, that part will no longer be able to function and be utilized. And though it may not um, be good looking or it may actually uh, not um, be uh, nice, I guess it's, it may be gross, but yet if it's uh, part of the body, it will be used um, so valuably. Have you ever been thankful for the 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 toenails and the uh, the fingernails that we have? You know how much pain we would feel even if we were missing one toenail, and how difficult it would be to function normally without it. Uh, do you know uh, uh, <laughs> the anus? Um, I've, I've met uh, many people who've not uh, were able to use uh, that body part uh, normally and were not able to um, uh, have the body waste come out of it. And when they are, um, some people are going through, um, um, what is that? Um, uh, no, um, people who cannot um, have a daily routine and be able to get rid of their waste. Uh, they go through uh, pain, and also it shows up in their skin. And you, you know, what if you don't? You're not thankful to have that body part because it's a part that is you feel that is dirty. Um, but without that, you know, it would be so difficult to live. Every part of our body is necessary. We need it. And it's very valuable. And you are a body of Christ, and we are, we have, uh, we are part of that body, each one of us. 
And if we were to, the body parts were to argue with each other, uh, you cannot accomplish anything. Uh, even in Romans uh, chapter 12, it tells us how our each body part, how we are, need to interact with each other in the church. Uh, it, you can, it tells you in detail, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. So please take the time later to meditate carefully on this. And we need to consider, uh, reflect on ourselves to see if we are um, fulfilling our, our responsibility as um, one part of that body. Actually, let's read uh, verses 3 through 13 real quickly together. These are actions that should come naturally to Christians. Two friends uh, rode a two-person bicycle. And it was quite difficult to ride up the hill. So when they reached the top, the friend in the front said, Wow, it was so hard to pedal up the hill. Then the friend in the back said, Wow, yes, it was hard for me too. I had to step on the brakes the whole time so that we wouldn't slide back. So, I mean, what would happen if one person was trying their best to accelerate and the pers another person was trying to, you know, press on the brakes? And it's the same for um, in, in the family as a couple uh, and also in the church. Uh, we should not, we need to support each other so that we may excel together forward instead of holding them back. And it says here, we, uh, God tells us to help each other. And if we should overlook if they're doing something uh, wrong um, and we should pray for them and we need to praise them if they're doing something right. And so why did God give us this ability to discern? It is for us to uh, be able to pray for them and to help them, support them. And we should not be just guests in the, in the church. And of course, uh, as guests, you know, you can feel uh, discomfort here and there and make complaints. 
But uh, as the host, as the owner, we tend, we will um, try to uh, solve whatever that is uh, uncomfortable or solve whatever that's lacking. Is there a guest in the church? There are no guests. We are um, a part of the uh, God's family. We are family. We're not strangers. And if we are unable to become one, then the powerful work of the Holy Spirit will not take place no matter how many Bible seminars we hold, no matter how hard we labor for the work for the Lord. And that's how much we would be limiting God's ability. Paul was more aware of this fact than anyone else as he was recording this epistle to the Philippians. Uh, thus, his objective may seem to be aiming toward maturity of faith. Uh, the other intention was to encourage the saints of Philippi who are in the midst of conflict and dissension to be like-minded. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. Let's read together. If you continue looking at uh, verse 3, it says, And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who have labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. I think um, the two um, sisters here, Euodia and uh, Sintich, uh, these uh, two sisters, I think they uh, were not getting along. So he tells them to have the same mind in the Lord. Of course, uh, taking two people who are quite able in something, if you put them together and if they were to do it together, it can far exceed what can they can accomplish by themselves, which is, we can say, like it's a synergy effect. And, but there are times when if even if you were to put those two able people together, uh, actually they can accomplish uh, even what they could have by themselves, uh, which is a tragedy. Because they cannot be uh, united as one and cannot cooperate with each other. Then, how can we be united as one? And we can become one when we have the heart of Christ. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 5. Let's read together.
So how can we do this? Uh, verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And so we, when, only when we have the heart of Christ can we become one. Do you know the distance between the spokes on a bicycle wheel becomes closer as it mo moves towards the center? And likewise, we can truly become one when we discard the desires of our flesh and live our life that's word-centered and Christ-centered. And we can cooperate in the work of the Lord with one accord and one mind. Right above here in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's read together. And this is um, pleading to the Christians. It's a request. And so we need to stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Uh, magnets have the strength to attract other metal. And the reason for this is that all, the, all of the molecules in the magnets are facing the same direction. But the molecules of other metals are facing all different directions. Uh, and which is not the case for magnets because they are all facing the same direction. In other words, uh, we can say that they are uh, cooperating for the same objective. And so there is that uh, the power, the strength to pull, uh, to attract the other metal. Um, I'm so thankful when I see our uh, adult English sisters um, preparing uh, our meal together. Um, one of the sisters had claimed that she had no talent whatsoever in cooking, but now I see she's displaying such amazing talent um, and making such uh, good food. And it, it's more tasteful than what you would find in any uh, fancy restaurant, and, and she's doing it with such joy. I mean, she's, she's, she's doing it for the Lord. Why would she uh, be laboring, um, you know, for what reason? Now, maybe she doesn't even cook at home. And because she didn't have, she didn't have the confidence, um, I'm sure she prayed. Don't you think she would have invested a little more time and add more effort into it? And it, we see the outcome, um, and it's incomparable um, because it is made with not only love and effort, but also with faith. Uh, all of you know um, grass, grasshoppers or lo locusts. 
And when you look in Proverbs um, chapter 30, um, it's of one of the four uh, intelligent things that we need to be uh, looking at, and uh, grasshoppers is one of them. And they have such strong unity. And uh, they do not have a leader or a king. Uh, and even if one who is sensitive to the wind flies, then the rest of the group will join in and fly together. And it is like our image when we are set apart from sin. Uh, and when we gather together as a group for the Bible seminars or even the summer and winter retreats in Korea. So all of us should give our whole hearts to prayer and cooperation for the Bible seminar, um, the numerous plans we have in the church, and any difficulties that may uh, come our way. Uh, there's a saying that uh, where even a spider web can tie up a lion if you combine them. We as individuals are um, weak, inadequate, and even sometimes foolish. Uh, however, when we become one for the Lord's will in unity, uh, solidarity, and collaboration, amazing work of the Holy Spirit will take place. And that would be God's ability. We all know salt, right? Um, salt. We can't help but be surprised at the fact that salt is made up of two quite poisonous elements. Uh, salt is a combination of two chemical elements, and that's sodium and chlorine. Now, these two elements, if you were to separate it, and if we were to take a certain amount or intake uh, any of this um, by itself, a certain amount can actually uh, even kill us. But when combined, it becomes salt, and it's something that is necessary for us to use to uh, uh, make our food taste better. And this is uh, it's the same with water. Water, water is the combination of oxygen and hydrogen. And oxygen, it, it helps the combustion of materials, and, and because it, it, it aids in that, it can be used even for welding. And hydrogen also has the nature to burn as fire, and it's used in explosives. And however, when these two are combined, it becomes water, which can uh, surprisingly even extinguish fire. So no matter how different our personalities, our characteristics, or even lifestyles may be, 
our hearts need to be of one accord in the Lord and be unified, joined and cooperative with all the works of the Lord. And it's the Lord's uh, desire, earnest desire that all Christians become one and be cooperative in doing His work. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's the last verse. First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Let's read together. It says here that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And here, perfectly joined together. And it's like, um, medically, if you explained it, it's like if um, a bone was out of place to put it back uh, in its place, joined together, yeah, fixed. I'm sure Sister Yuki knows, but if the bones are not perfectly uh, joined together, um, the friction that may cause um, can cause great pain. And only when it's joined perfectly together uh, can the body move um, with power. Um, our uh, sister Yuki and brother Adam um, had their wedding uh, in May, May 12th, and they returned to Guam last uh, Tuesday. And um, Sister Yuki's mother, Sister Cole, and Brother Adam's mother, Sister Yu, also joined um, together here. Um, they will sing a special uh, hymn for us. Uh, it's, it goes along with our slogan, We are one in the Lord. Uh, they will sing in um, Korean and English after um, we finish the, the Word of God here. And so please consider the, the, the words in the song um, and just meditate on what it would mean to us. So all of us should be united with the love and word of the Lord and labor with all our might for His glory, His, the gospel, the church, and especially for the great Bible seminar that's starting tomorrow. So let's give it our best effort with this sense of urgency and strong resolution because this may be our last opportunity to spread the gospel and to sacrifice for the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
there was at, um, at the time of his martyrdom, one martyred um, Christian shouted this. How tragic it is that I have only one life to give for the Lord. So let's, um, all of us, let's gather our hearts together so that we may not have this kind of extent to this extent, but let's even try to resemble um, this kind of uh, heart and uh, uh, desire. If we become one and united as one, I think even just our family alone, our church family alone, we'd be able to uh, overflow this the sanctuary will be too small. Of course, it's not too late. So it is not too late. Let's again um, pray one more time. Let's make that one more call. Let's sacrifice more. Uh, it's not too late uh, to reach out. So let's, what this is uh, gospelization, evangelism is uh, what pleases the Lord the most. So let's focus our faith life on evangelism and spreading the gospel. Let's pray together. Our Father God who loves us so much, we thank you. Father God, you've given us the privilege uh, only that you can give and for us to even spread the gospel. We thank you. And we truly desired our church, uh, the church of, uh, that was built with your blood, uh, to be more steadfast. And like the early churches, uh, we des truly desire to be able to love on each other, each other so that we may uh, spread the gospel with passion. And every, each and every brother or sister help wherever they are to be able to be used more valuably by you. And let not one be missing in taking part of your work, whether that be small or great. And we pray that um, through our unity, through our cooperation, that one more soul uh, be saved um, through this. And please take a hold of our hearts so that we may only look upon you, that we may have the strength and the courage uh, that comes from looking only at you. And we earnestly pray that um, as individuals, um, as a family, as a department, and as the whole church, that we will be used preciously by you. 
오늘 밤에 들어오시는 이상민 목사님과 그 성교팀에게도 주님의 인도하심과 구하심이 함께하기를 and also for Pastor Lee and the saints coming from Korea, the mission team, we uh, ask for your guidance and protection. And help us to give it our best uh, for this uh, coming week that we can give it our best for your glory. And we pray in Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hymnal 393.